guys and welcome back to another video so uh for today's sketchbook session i kind of wanted to revisit another method how i like to add color to my sketches i know like frequently whenever i post like sketchbook tours and stuff a lot of you guys comment that you like how vibrant and colorful a lot of my spreads are and i think more recently i've been mostly working with like markers and paint so let's revisit something that's a little bit more i think like kind of more accessible to people which is like pencil crayons or colored pencils uh whichever way you say it i am canadian so i do say pencil crayons so uh i pulled out my prismacolor scholars now i've used like old ones in the past like rose art which i detest but i use laurentian i use crayola before but my favorite are the prismacolor uh, pencils just because i have a bunch that were either gifts or sets that i bought during like high school to university days um because i used to use a lot of graphite and pencil crayons for like any finished work because i was not used to doing like painting or anything else uh, that requires like color so uh the difference between using the prismacolor Premiers and the Prismacolor Scholars. The Scholars are a little bit more, uh, have a harder core compared to the Premiers. So I like to use them for sketching for the most part or adding color in this way because I don't have to sharpen as frequently. Um, but because of their. Actually, I'm not too sure if it's softer to core they break easier or if it's harder they break easier because I can't really tell because a lot of my scholars actually seem like the lead is like shattered in the inside it might be because i i store it in a like plastic case so it might like rattle around from like being transported for a few years that i've had them but let's talk about who i'm drawing and why i'm drawing them so i believe in a previous video probably saturday's video i asked you guys what kind of characters or ocs you have that you would deem as like a comfort character like an oc or a character that you want to draw whenever you you feel stuck or a character you feel comfortable just drawing like all the time kind of like that kind of a favorite character and for me if i think about genshin characters I draw a Bennett. Who else is there? I think Kazuha. I've drawn Ito a fair amount. Goro is another one I like to draw. Kokomi, Yanfei. Um, I used to say like Barbara and Kaya. I would also draw a lot, but recently I haven't, so I don't think I like no longer remembered her design as much as I did before. But today I am going to be drawing Bennett. I have another person I'm going to be drawing a little bit later in the video. So it's kind of two different spreads that I'm doing today. So the color scheme that I decided to choose for the spreads. So let's talk about the one I'm using right now. I, I think I talked about this a lot. I like to have a warm color and a cool color for the most part. Usually I use the warmer tone uh, or warmer color for like the skin and a lot of the like lighter areas and then the cooler tone i usually like to use it for like darker areas or only cooler areas or anything that needs to be i don't know it depends on i guess the the hue and the saturation of the color you're using as well but that's generally what i like to do in the past because i don't think i've done this that often in this particular sketchbook which is why i wanted to revisit it and i know some people who haven't been following me um during that time you might be interested in seeing another way you can kind of add color to your spread which is what i like to do if i can and i don't feel like using markers or pulling out my paints is just to use something really simple like pencil crayons or colored pencils um i i preferably like using two to three colors if i know i want more of a pg skin tone or more of a like a lighter more pastel color i will pick that along with two other colors usually being more of like mid-tones if i can i like to use them like alongside with my graphite pencils or like mechanical pencils because i still like those crisp dark lines if i can still use them oh by the way this is where i got frustrated so i switched to the premiers for my orange just for consistency otherwise i would have picked a different color but i like kind of having a consistent color throughout my spreads if i can if especially if i'm having like more of a limited color palette i just think it makes the whole page look a little bit more cohesive so yeah uh, I tried my best to think of poses for Bennett. 
Uh, the next person I'm drawing is also a sword user, so I'm just kind of continuing that energy. I didn't really want to tackle like a bow user, otherwise I would have to pull out so much reference and the session would have been quite much longer. I believe this in total was about two hours. It was about like two hours of footage anyways. It's probably a longer session just because like sometimes there's wait time or I'm just watching the video that I have in the background so that I kind of get distracted from time to time. But the amount of filming, I believe it was just over two hours, like two hours and six minutes. So I don't want to spend too much time sketching, but I don't want to limit myself to time either. So, hmm, what else to talk about? Yeah, so I used orange mostly for a lot of the warmer areas of Bennett, especially like his hair, um, his skin. Um, a lot of his outfit tends to be more of a tan color, so I decided to choose a blue and an orange. I've used this combination in the past before, but the blue is a little bit on the darker side, so I tried my best not to press too hard and to leave it more um, pale if I could, or let it like kind of like trail off so that my mechanical pencil could be the darker or darkest thing on the page because I like making the lines look dark and crisp and clean if I want them to be and they kind of pop out a little bit more from the actual color. Um, but yeah, so I only ended up doing three for Bennett. Now I was struggling with the last one quite a bit. I think it's also because I kind of screwed up the proportions and initially I wasn't going to draw his legs so that we could fit maybe headshots on the underside or like the bottom right hand corner instead but I decided to drag out his legs because I ended up drawing him a little bit too large and I didn't scrunch up his body as much as I would like to because I kind of wanted him to be a little bit more hunched over like as if he's injured um, because he's a little bit accident prone obviously <laughs> so yeah and you can see here I was kind of going back and forth I think I did this for all the doodles I kind of go back and forth with the pencil crayon and the graphite so usually I would pick the lighter color of my two colors and sketch with that first and kind of get like a base or most of like the details that I want down here is Bennett apologies for the darker lighting I decided to film this like past midnight so the lighting's a little bit off from when I was filming the intro earlier but here is the next spread so we're just gonna move on I'm just preparing so I'm adding the paper not the paper clips, the binder clips to each side to keep my pages a little bit more uh, flat and sturdy. But the left side kind of like puffs up because the amount of painting and gouache that I've done on this side, um, it's hard for it to get kind of more like a flat surface. So hopefully the more I sketch with like more dry mediums, we can kind of get past that so I can have a flat surface again. The next person, Wow, I'm having like a lisp right now. The next person I am drawing is Kazuha. Like I mentioned, he's another character that I really like to draw whenever I feel a little bit like art blocked. So yeah, similar to Bennett's spread, I'm starting off with the lighter color of... Actually, this is arguably... The colors I chose for Kazuha are very similar in value and I, I'm not like super happy with the color choice that I said like I decided to use. I've used like a similar color palette, limited color palette I guess, in a different spread in my old sketchbook and I really liked it but the thing is with those colors is that I believe they were more like pastel and it was a little bit more like pink and green rather than orange and this green you're gonna see me add. So for Kazuha, he doesn't really have any green on his outfit. He does have like more of that light minty teal color for his um, vision but he has like no green on his outfit so it might be a little bit confusing on why I chose this as kind of like the accent color I decided to put with the orange. Um, orange is gonna be the main focus of the color but my reasoning was because I thought it would look cute um, because I've used it in a previous spread but I didn't realize that you know it doesn't really fit too much. The way I used it for the other spread with the markers and their more pastel tone I was able to layer it up in such a way and kind of neutralize um, more of like my warmer tones by using a pastel green and it really worked nicely with his hair and it kind of gave me more of a blocky effect but with pencil crayon it was a bit difficult to incorporate it other than like in the white areas of his um like the fabric as well as like in his hair which is a little bit more of a warmer 
very light beigeish gray color for his hair. His, like his hair isn't like completely white. Um, the more I look at like his model and like the official artwork, yeah, his hair isn't completely white. It's kind of like it's kind of like an off white. If that makes sense. So I did my best to kind of like balance uh, the two, but because I knew I I kind of like having contrast in my sketches, so I decided to make sure that I push um, certain areas further, and then if I really want any dark areas, I will just really push with my pencil and kind of get that dark area because it will read a little bit better in my opinion because I do like having contrast in my sketches if I can. Um, yeah, let's not talk about that arm. I. I had two poses in my head that I wanted to tackle and I think I compromised the the arm so it doesn't look like it's receding or uh, what is it called like foreshortening so it reads really short and weird so please ignore that. Um, I think all three of these of Kazuha's sketches are not my favorite. I feel like all three of them I kind of tried my best in the middle to kind of salvage it more or less the end one and this one the face i really needed to like spruce up and fix so you're gonna see that the orange if it gets in, like too intense or too blocky and i can't see what i'm working on i will pull out my harder white eraser to kind of like rub out the mistakes um usually if i'm working like this method i don't erase too much because i would like the plan everything with kind of like the rough sketch with the uh, more lighter color so that I can just focus on like adding detail making things look a little bit more sharp and refined but you know if you make mistakes you can get rid of them if you need to <laughs> so that is what I did I also decided to color in the right side of his face a little bit kind of like to put it in shadow just because the inside of his eye did get a little bit too orangey so I just wanted to make it look like it's in the shadow so it doesn't read really weird like as if he has pink eye or something or like you know discoloration in his eye especially like where his sclera is okay this one has a little bit of explaining uh same thing with the first sketch of kazuha i kind of had two poses in mind that i wanted to do a more like jumping pose but once again i kind of screwed up adding his torso and his arms so they look really weird so i tried my best to get rid of the sketch as much as i could and then i pressed harder with the orange uh, pencil crayon to see if i could you know salvage the pose out of it so we just went with a really simple kind of like free quarter standing pose it was just much easier for me to salvage and not hate um, and because i drew it so large it was just easier for me to kind of pull from the the sketch that i already have rather than trying to cram in a few other sketches on top of like this mess hmm. But if you guys have a favorite way to add color to your spreads or your sketchbook, do let me know. I know some people like love using paints just because you probably have endless colors and you can just mix the colors that you want. But I know if you're kind of lazy like me, painting is... I feel like it takes a long time for prep or like drying time or like it just feels a little bit more involved in a sense and sometimes when i do that it doesn't feel like too much like sketching like i feel like i try to clean it up and try to refine or try to fix things so that they look more finished especially like with my gouache stuff so i usually try to stick with markers or pencil crayons if i'm doing like limited color palettes or sketches where i can kind of sketch more freely um ballpoint pens another way that you could do this I know some people use pastels, but I'm definitely not a pastel person, especially like oil pastels. I've mostly used oil pastels for like studies in high school, and then I've used chalk pastel to help accent pieces in the past just for like soft gradients uh, because you could really smudge it around and stuff, but I've never really used it as a medium like on its own for like a full finished piece. I think it's a medium I'm definitely scared to use. Mm, what else is there? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think there's anything else to talk about uh, for this. But do let me know what's your favorite kind of like way to add color if you do add color. Oh, like alcohol markers is another way a lot of people like to add color. But I try to, I try to make sure like the ways I add color to my sketches doesn't bleed through because the paper in my sketchbook or notebook is super thin. Ah, I forgot about this. Um, I hit halfway. I know it's been really slow, 
um, because I haven't been sketching a lot of my sketchbook, but we hit halfway, so I like to mark it by putting halfway somewhere in the sketchbook spread, and because I have this gap, I decided to put it there. You can see like a faint half up in the left-hand corner of the right page, so I usually like to mark that out way in advance, kind of like as a surprise, like, hey, you hit halfway, which means... There's still a lot of sketching I can do in the sketchbook, but that's fine. I want to get back into the groove of sketching. I think I said this like for months now, but hopefully I can. Uh, these ones were actually very fun to do, and I do like the results for the most part. Uh, mostly Bennett's, other than the last one, and then these are okay. But hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I know it's a little bit more... I feel like shorter for two spreads, but hopefully it's not too, too fast. Um, but I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!